Hi and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn and today I am going to be talking about some beers that will go well with a Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, I think it's a great idea for a show. I would love to take credit for it myself, but this was actually suggest suggested by a viewer of the show and someone who left a comment at the uh, Beer Temple website, which is craftbeertemple.com. Usually at the beginning of the show, I have that right kind of here. And um, uh, yeah, he, he uh, Rick, uh, I commented on the show and said that he was going to be drinking some beer for Thanksgiving and asked if I was also going to be drinking beer for Thanksgiving. And if so, what would I suggest? So, so many options here. Uh, I brought out a couple here. I'm not going to actually taste through all of them, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, what types of beers you can pair with Thanksgiving and then uh, taste out one of them. So um, really, uh, to me, it, it's kind of like two parts. Uh, you're going to have your the beer you're going to have with the actual meal and then, you know, all the pies and desserts and everything like that. At the end, you, you might want to have a, a different beer. So th that's kind of how I, I took it. Uh, first, what am I going to want to have with the you know traditional turkey gravy mashed potatoes um and then you know some vegetable stuff like that stuffing and uh there's a ton of ways to go um even just with beer i think you could have something that really is kind of a nice sipping beer uh, that will go well with all of the flavor components of a thanksgiving meal and also kind of enhance the, the you know have its own flavor to kind of enhance them and almost like a wine would. Um, and it, it, in that sense, you know, it, it's really a, about pairing the meal um, and and just like just like you would a wine. And in, in that case, I would go with something a little bit heavier, a little bit richer, fuller flavored. Um, I really like uh, B Belgian dark ales in this case like a Belgian double something like that you could step it up a little higher um, and, and do a triple if you want I think um, you know the doubles and the quads are, are really nice because they have that kind of caramelized maltiness in them and I think that really really lends itself well to some of these bigger richer flavors that you often get in Thanksgiving dinner without being so big and and without being roasty you know so you're so you're, you're stick, staying away from the roast you're playing more to kind of some of that nice uh, savory qualities in, in your meats with some nice sweetness here some nice fruit tones um some kind of peppery flavors as well um and i i think here's let me just say this when in doubt, go Belgian. I mean, Belgian pairs so well with a variety of things. Um, so in this case, I really do think that these beers go go very nicely as well. You could also go with a Cezanne, something like that. I think some of the, uh, it, it would be lighter and you get a little bit more of, um, you know, tropical lemon, maybe you know, citrus fruit out of it. Uh, and, and that distinct kind of peppery note as well, kind of like a lemongrass and pepper note uh, that you can get from some saisons um the other side i would say is if you want something that's actually going to kind of quench your thirst and, and get you ready for that next bite i like to go with something a little bit lighter and those i feel are awesome beers to have with meals as well because you know one thing a wine can't do is really quench your thirst you know you're going to want to have a glass of wine and a glass of water you know so you don't really need to do that with beer so if you stick with something like maybe an amber or a, a lager maybe a darker lager to play up with some of that malt flavoring like you i was saying you would get with the belgian but have it crisper cleaner and quenching as well refreshing so in that case you could certainly go with um you know any kind of, of darker lager um you could go with a lot of you know american amber ales even are are pretty light and and dry and, and quenching um, i wouldn't go with anything especially bitter but a little bit of bite might be nice kind of help clean your palate and that's actually what i went with here uh, this is uh, an alt i think alt beers would be really good um, they're kind of a hybrid between ales and lagers uh, i'll get into that a little bit i don't think i've ever had an alt on the show before uh, in fact I, I think i'll probably uh drink this one in fact why don't i do that now um, I'll talk a little bit about what alt beers are. I've said in the past that you know all beers are 
either ale or lager, except when they're not. Um, all, all beers pretty much are. There's very few exceptions to the rule. Um, the, the most famous, um, and really the ones that are coming to mind right now, are the, uh, the Kolsch, the Alt, and the uh, Steam Beer, or California Common, are the three hybrid styles that aren't really uh, lagers or ales. Um, yeah, I guess if you had to define them, you could say that you know, these are ales. Um, a California Common is technically, I guess, a lager because uh, it's all about what yeast they use. But really what an alt is, is very similar to a Kolsch. Uh, it actually is, comes from a rival town of Cologne where the Kolsch is from. Uh, this is from uh, Dusseldorf and uh, historically, not this one, this is from Chicago. Uh, and it's a beer where it's an ale that they use and then they take that ale and they lager it. So they cold store it for a, a a long period of time while it's fermenting. It slows down the fermentation. It allows for a much cleaner fermentation, less kind of fruity esters. And it also, the yeast actually does clean up some of its own esters that it produces and makes a really nice, easy drinking beer. Now it still is an ale, so you get a little bit of that kind of fruit driven character from the yeast. Um, and in the case of a uh, Dusseldorf Alt, unlike a Kolsch, which is very light, highly quenched, uh, this is quenching too, but it's got a little bit more hop bite to them in the best examples, and it also has a lot more malt to it. I mean, you can see this is a nice kind of rich copper colored beer. Um, not the easiest style to find, but you can. Um, Yurig Alt uh, is a very distinct kind of pop swing top bottle. It's very kind of, well, it's like circular at the base and then becomes a very thin neck. It's a bottle about this. Very distinct. Um, that's probably the most famous alt, but there are others. Uh, in Chicago, uh, Metropolitan right here has the um, Ironworks alt. Uh, in Wisconsin, the uh, Tyranina Brewery makes a Headless Man alt, I believe. So just look around in your area and see what alt beers are out there. Uh, also, you know, you can go to the um, import section. Imported alts, other than Eurig, are going to be difficult to find, but you know, th those will be the real deal. Um, so let's uh, smell this beer real quick and then I'll, I'll kind of move on. Uh, but hopefully you get what I'm, I'm saying. So you want something with a little bit of malt character, a little bit of body there, uh, and then either kind of, do you want it to really kind of be a highly complex beer that has a lot of flavor in its own right and can kind of go head to head with these big, savory, meaty, um, powerful dishes that you typically get in, or not powerful, but just, you know, a lot going on in Thanksgiving dinner. Um, you know, macaroni and cheese and stuff like that. Or, or do you want something that, man, that's a lot of kind of rich food. I want something to kind of cut through it. Or do both, which is probably what I'll end up doing. Okay. So, what do I have here? It's a very clean nose. This beer is a little bit cool. Um, like I said, wonderful kind of uh, brownish copper color to it, um, and uh, lovely uh, head, and it's sticking around too. Great head retention here. A, a nice, like, caramel malt. Very clean, a little bit of like an orange character. <sighs> Maybe like hints of of like plantain, not quite like a ripe banana, but you know, hints at kind of that type of fruit as well. But really this is about malt. It's about nice toffeed caramel malt. Very easy drinking. Low bitterness, ideally in my own like a little bit of like a clean bite to it. So they're not hoppy beers at all, but they can be quite bitter. But it's a very clean bitter. It doesn't kind of like make your mouth feel gross and puckered. Um, <clears throat> And they're very distinct in that way. Um, so the alts that I like from Dusseldorf is like a pure clean bitterness on the back end. So you get a nice malt driven clean beer with a nice kind of like 
prick of, of bitterness at the end. This certainly does have some bitterness, um, not as much as I personally would ideally like, um, but still for Thanksgiving, I think this would be great. Um, certainly a, um, a nice kind of gulping beer. Um, this one definitely has some ale-like qualities. Um, it, it's clean, but there certainly are those. At this time, now I'm getting almost like apple skin in addition to um, the orange and, and even some of that banana-y note to it as well. Um, this is a solid beer, though. I mean, if I'm going to rate it, I'll give this um, an 88. I like it. Um, and I think food would really kind of bring out some of this as well, and, and it would go very well with it. So... You know, if you're looking for that for the actual meal portion, I would go there. Um, <clears throat> but then, you know, things get serious. You know, you start bringing out the cakes and the pies and pumpkin pie. And something I don't have here, but I think is an obvious choice, is a pumpkin beer. You know, pumpkin beer goes really well and could actually play to either side. If you're going to go with something a little bit more sessionable, a lighter kind of six-pack style pumpkin beer, that will go great with the actual meal, um, especially if you have, you know, some more flavorful or like spicings, spice uh, stuffings and stuff going on. You know, some of that nutmeg, clove, cinnamon uh, in a lot of the pumpkin beers could play well to that. In dessert time, if you start going to these imperial pumpkin beers, like the uh, you know the the famous pumpkin from Southern King, uh, from Southern Tier, uh, that's pretty much tradition with me. Uh, that's pretty much when I have that beer, and the only time I have that beer uh, is Thanksgiving dinner. I like to have a single bottle of it, and it goes very well. Um, but there's a lot of other really great beers you can do as well. Um, it, it, obviously, you know, stouts are nice. I like the, a stout with a nice kind of roast edge to it. Um, here I have uh, the, the Dragon's Milk. Uh, they used to call it, I'm pretty sure it was an old ale aged in bourbon barrels, um, but or oak barrels, I should say, but I guess now they're calling it a stout. Um, but this is from New Holland up in Michigan, and uh, last year's, this is actually uh, the 2011 batch, and... Uh, 10% alcohol. It's going to give you a nice, rich, chocolatey beer. Um, the barrel is going to give us some tannin to it as well. Um, some nice kind of vanilla character. So if you're doing anything with chocolate or ice cream, you know, something like this goes really well. Um, any sort of kind of rich, dark dessert. Uh, and even, you know, like a, a pie, pumpkin pie. I mean, shoot, having this that would almost be like having like a nice bowl of, of, of chocolate ice cream with it as well. Um, if you really want to get serious, you can step it up and go with a nice English barley wine. Um, I'm going to emphasize English style barley wines. A lot of American barley wines are pretty much just very malty double IPAs. Um, they taste great, but I don't know if I would want that with dessert. Um, a true English style barley wine is going to just be really um, just wonderfully complex, like a tawny port. Um, it's going to have a wonderful kind of rich, ripe, dripping nectar qualities to it. Um, and just really, really goes well uh, for at the end of the meal and even beyond. You know, after everything's over and you're just sitting there and just digesting, you want a snifter of, of something like an English barley wine. The one I have here is J.W. Lee's Harvest Dale from 1999. Um, don't let that fool you. This beer could have been from 1979 and still be fine. Uh, they age beautifully well. And... Uh, you know, that, that's probably my preference uh, for a, a dessert beer for Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, it's kind of a special occasion, and why not have a special beer with it? You know, a beer like this, a little bottle, is probably going to run you $10, but it'll, you know, feed, I, I guess for lack of a better word, two people easy. Um, and, you know, it's a special occasion. Uh, I say splurge and, you know, buy a really nice English barley wine. Uh, J.W. Lee's, um, if you can get it, Thomas Hardy's would be nice as well. Uh, but if not, if you can't find either of them, a nice English style barley wine. Uh, and there are plenty of them out there that are made in America as well. Uh, so just go check that out as well. I think uh, Old Foghorn is a pretty good one from uh, um, Anchor Brewery, and, and that's kind of a hybrid between American and English, and certainly around. So uh, try that. Um, 
I think that's about it, guys. Let me know if there's any other beers that you have questions about that might go with Thanksgiving, or if there's ones that you have found work especially well, and uh, you just want to throw it out and let everybody else know. Uh, I would love it. I personally would like to know myself. Um, but I hope you guys got kind of where I'm coming from. Uh, you want to go something with a little bit of a malt backing. You don't want to go anything too bitter, I think. I think it, that'll just kind of detract from, you know, the just lovely savory qualities of the Thanksgiving meal and um, you know nothing really too sour as well uh, it, it's basically with your malt or your yeast character and how much do you want to go what style of beer do you want to do do you want to do something that's you know a sipper or do you want something that's going to kind of quench your thirst uh, that's about it guys uh, thank you Rick for the suggestion awesome suggestion for the show if anybody else has suggestions, please leave a comment at craftbeertemple.com. Uh, I will surely let you know if I use it because I'll do a show on it. Um, until then, guys, I've got some great Thanksgiving beers to drink, starting with this lovely alt from Ironwork from Metropolitan Brewing in Chicago. And hopefully you do too.